Today's video will be on cleaning out and completely rearranging the single coordination cage for five male rats. Before I dig into cleaning, I thought I'd just talk about my preferred cleaning tools. Um, you won't see me use everything in this video, but these are the things that I use the most. Um, the first thing I usually do is I sweep with this little dollar store hand broom that the rats have personalized. Um, I try to sweep my fleece and just um, clean up small amounts of poop wherever I can. Poochie, what you doing? One of the rats was peeking out of the cage. Um, I then will vacuum with this little hand vac that came from Aldi. Um, it works really, really well. The filter is washable and um, I suck up anything that's left and then empty it. Um, we've got some little small garbage bags. These are four gallon with the tie. My favorite product, though, is this. Um, Nature's Miracle Small Animal Scrubbing Wipes. Um, these have this really nice bumpy texture. And I usually, let's see if we can get a good video of that. Look how nice that is. That's actually raised. Um, I usually only need one or two to clean the entire cage, even if I'm doing a deep clean. Um, hello, Spot my cat helper um, they're really nice and big they fill up your whole hand I can wipe out the entire bottom of the cage even if it's really yucky and then use a second one to wipe down the bars if it's not terribly yucky I can use the same one and just wipe down the whole cage so these are my favorite products um, if I need more cleaning power Dawn dish soap is my go-to um, I will put a tiny tiny little squirt about size of my fingernail in a spray bottle at least this tall and a little bit of vinegar and fill the rest up with water shake it real good and clean with that um, if I'm scrubbing plastic toys in the tub I just use Dawn dish soap and rinse really really well so that's a video for a different day though this is for cage cleaning in this part of the video which is in double speed you'll see me remove the rats after attempting to coax them to come out on their own. You'll also see me remove a few toys and there's me convincing rats to come out of the cage. Which you'll notice doesn't go extremely well. I also took out their food bowl and a broken hammock that I let them play with. And they move it all over and stick it in things in their cage. And this is where I just decided to go ahead and remove the rats manually because they weren't moving quite fast enough for my taste. Here's Sleepy Poochie. Now I'm back in normal time and I start with removing the hanging hammocks as well as all the clips that attach them to the cage. Some of them are hung up with shower rings. Some are hung with, um, I think they're called sea links for bird cages, which are more colorful and they're a little more fiddly to remove. And that's what I'm doing here and I'm putting the dirty hammocks in a pile. Um, I had one hammock in the back that really wasn't that dirty, and originally I put it in a different pile and then decided to just wash it anyway. Next I started um, removing the chew toys. I have lots of different kinds, some that I've purchased and some that I've made. And I try to hang them in places that they can access from different places in the cage. So some they can reach from hammocks, some they can reach from the ground, some from shelves, in the hopes that they will chew those things instead of things they're not supposed to. And so far it's worked pretty well. Take a break to love on the cute rats. 
can't help it. They're just so adorable. And they do cute things. Alright, this part I'm removing the corner top litter box that was on the shelf. I don't normally use these shelves. Um, I dislike them a lot because they take up lots of room. Now Poochie is the only rat who runs on the wheel and I decided for this layout that I was going to take it out for a little while. Um, sometimes when I take it out and then put it back in, he uses it more. So It's got four wing nuts that have to be removed. They take a little bit. Oh, there's nipples going down the back of the cage. So I took all the pieces off and then I put them inside the wheel so I didn't lose them. Little jingly balls that they like to move around and play with. Now I'm going to get my amazing little vacuum from Aldi. I'll do a freeze frame there so you could see it better. Um, it's just a little like hand vac. I think it costs about 20 bucks, and I use this to vacuum up any loose food, poop, shredded, uh, chew toys, you know, whatever. The filter in it is washable, you saw it at the beginning of the video, so. And George is trying to figure out what I'm doing. So I had a little piece of carpet up on that shelf, and so I was just vacuuming that. So that when I remove it, it doesn't make a mess. more toys. Then I start vacuuming in the bottom of the cage. I have my rats on fleece with a flannel inner core. And so it gets kind of full of crumbs and stuff. So I vacuum it pretty regularly. And vacuuming before washing helps prevent the debris from getting into the washing machine. I'm pretty detailed with the vacuum because I cloak my fleece and if I don't vacuum it well there will be crumbs all in the little thread lines. Then I can remove the fleece pad. That went in my dirty pile. Alright, then I vacuumed. And I think I'm vacuuming a little more here. No, I'm removing a litter box, so it's like. Nope, vacuuming. I was wrong. They always they manage to get some crumbs underneath the fleece, so I just vacuum it again. I removed the shelf, which was quite dirty. I'll clean that later. And I removed the bird ladder. My boys don't like the ramps that come with this cage, so I use these inexpensive bird ladders instead. And then the shelf itself comes off. More chew toys. Last, I take out the litter boxes so that I can clean them. That one wasn't very messy. They hadn't really used it much. But this one I put under the water bottle to catch drips, and it was pretty, pretty full. Messed with the cute rat again. Here you see that I'm putting binder clips on the doors that prevents the doors from closing on the rats if they climb on it. I got out my wipes, which we talked about at the beginning of the video, and I'm wiping out the interior of the cage. My base pan is made from Coroplast that was purchased at Home Depot. 
and so it's very easy to just wipe it clean. It doesn't take very long either, but I like to really scrub it good to make sure we don't have any germs in any places that you can't see. My cage is a little wobbly. We're not really sure. Um, I got it secondhand, so it's a little wobbly, but it's not going anywhere. Poochie running around on the top of the cage again. I like that little dog bed on the top. So now I'm wiping around the front of the thing. And I try to actually stick my face in the cage and make sure I've gotten all the areas. And then apparently that knocked up some crumbs, so I vacuumed it again. My boys are very, very sensitive to dust, so I try to keep the crumbs and dust to a bare minimum. And any little bit I can vacuum up just helps with that a lot. And then I got out a garbage bag. Those are little four gallon bags. And there goes somebody down the back of the cage. Probably Gucci. Guessing based on the white tummy. Now it looks like I'm getting ready to wipe the cage down itself. I didn't move those two lava ledges because they were already where I wanted them. And I don't have any spares. So if I get them in the right place, I don't usually clean them for a little bit. I had a spare, but it broke. And if you see me jump or get startled, it's because I was wearing fuzzy socks and Nibbles decided it would be really great to nip at them. They don't bother me in regular socks, but the fuzzy ones were very confusing, apparently. And they kept coming and getting in my lap. Nibbles had just climbed in my lap and was investigating the garbage. See blue running around in the right corner there. And the bulls is in the left. He's trying to figure out why I moved the ladder over there instead of the stairs over there instead of up against the cage because he can't get inside and see what I'm doing. So I wipe the top, the sides, the doors all down because they do pee on the top of the cage if they're running around on the top sometimes. One of my children put stamps on the front of the chloroplast, so I was trying to wipe that off, but it didn't really come off. Next, I think, I decided to put all the dirty laundry in the hamper. I took the clips off of the hammocks so I could reuse that. Somebody's in the bins under the cage. And there goes Fred up the back of the cage. I think next I was getting a pad for the bottom of the cage. Yes, and this one is actually way too big. I made it for our dog kennel. Um, and so I had to fold it quite a bit, which you'll see, to make it fit. At some point I'll just trim it smaller, but I haven't done that yet. So I had to play with it a lot to get it to fit. 
That's Fred running around on the top of the cage. Probably trying to figure out what I'm doing. <coughs> what I'm doing right here. Oh, it looks like somebody came and said hello, so I was probably playing with them. Nipples again. He was very nosy while I cleaned. Putting some stuff in the garbage. There goes George up the back. There's a great deal of argument in the rat community about whether rats like to climb or not. Mine definitely like to. We left a litter box out until we came to see what the noise was. Any time they come to see me, I give them a little attention. Nipples was very confused about the stairs being away from the cage. And yes, I talk to my rats. I don't know anybody who has pets that doesn't talk to them. So that litter box I decided to put back since it wasn't very dirty. And I put it in a different place. And I put the pea stone in. Rats like to pee on smooth objects, so putting a stone that's relatively smooth in the litter box actually helps them to be more accurate with litter use. I believe I'm still talking to Blue here because he's sitting in my lap. I really like when I wear this little kimono so they can hide in it. That looks great fun. Alright, next I dumped the other litter box. My litter boxes are plastic shoe bins from the dollar store. Now, the other one may be from Walmart, but I found that those actually work better than the corner boxes because they don't kick litter and poop out of them as easily. And I use pelleted pine cat litter in my litter boxes. This is the only thing I've found that doesn't seem to make them sneeze. Nibbles had to come see what I was doing. He's so nosy. And I put that litter box back in. Normally I put a little more litter in it than that, but I was out. So I have to go to the store and get some more, and then I put the pea stone in. They are attached to the cage with pipe cleaners and lanyard clips. I used a hot awl, which is a sewing tool, but any sharp, pointy object would work, and punched little holes in the corners and threaded the pipe cleaners through that, and then just put a lanyard clip on them. And I did this originally so I could suspend them from the top of the cage, but I don't do that as much anymore. Um, I still find the long attachments to be really handy. So, looks like those are attached. Not sure what I'm grabbing yet here. But you can watch the rats get into mischief. So Nibbles is trying to climb in the cage. This is why he's upset. Blue is on the top of the cage. Gucci at the bottom corner, looking around. They have this whole room to roam around in, but they don't really 
go very far from the page. Alright, these baskets are from the dollar store, and I wasn't originally sure which one I was going to use, so I was playing around with where to put it. Decided to use the red one. Must boot the nose. And I fastened it with the shower rings. These are also from the dollar store. Nipples bit my toe. He was very apologetic. He really just wanted my sock. Now I'm fastening it to the top of the cage. I think at this point he had nipped my toe twice, so I was a little more careful with where my feet were at this point. Nevadas were very curious about what I was doing on the top of the page. I've noticed they like stuff that's wobbly, so I don't always fasten my stuff down super tight. Sometimes I leave it kind of loose and swinging like this basket. And then from there, I kind of built around that. Went and got some hammocks. Ooh, please, cute white tummy. I always grab stuff that, that is more than I can fit in the cage and then decide later what to use. But I did wind up using both of these hammocks. Um, this one is, I believe, like 24 by 26 inches. I recycled some blue jeans for the bottom and it's placed for the top. And then the other one is a fat quarter from Walmart. Or Joann's, I don't remember honestly. I relocated nibbles because he would not leave my feet alone. Now I'm putting rings on the corners so that I can hang the hammocks up. Somebody's playing in the tunnel on the top of the page. important to place hammocks so that if your rat falls they catch them. So, continuing to hang the hammocks up. This one I was having a little trouble with hanging, so I used a bird clip. That seemed like a good idea at the time, but it actually wound up falling down, so I just wound up later hanging it up normally, as I did the other ones. Then I took the slightly smaller hammock and I hung it in the shorter side of the cage, sort of underneath this one so that they could get up and down using the hammocks if they want to. And I stretched it out a little more because I wanted this one a little tighter.
And then for this last corner, since I wanted to go around the hammock I'd already hung, I used this little piece of chain that came with a hanging gardening basket from the dollar store. Blue thought there were treats in that bowl, but there were not. And I looped it through the top of the cage and hooked it back on itself with a lanyard hook. That worked out really well. I haven't had any problems with using these little chains. They're pretty strong. Next I took this tube and I bent it into this sort of funky S shape and decided to fasten that in the cage. I like to give my racks multiple ways to get from one place to another. Um, I fastened this in place using pipe cleaners. And the rats had a little squabble under the cage. I had to fuss at them. Apparently they were squishing each other, which normally they like, but apparently in the bins under the cage this is unacceptable. So they had a little chat. So I decided to adjust the pipe cleaner on this part of the tube to make it easier for me to fasten it. I looped it through the bars of the cage and around one of those bars there and fasten it back on itself. And then I tuck the tail from the pipe cleaner behind the tube. Then I took my other two pipe cleaners and used that to fasten the bottom of the tube where I needed it. I probably should have done this before putting the hammocks in, but I did not know that I was going to use it until I got a couple of things in the cage, so I just worked around them. The background noise you're hearing is the fan on my computer. played with the angle at the top a little bit so they can now climb from the bottom of the tube into that middle section if they want to. I've decided to put their little mailbox in the cage. I rotate between a couple of different toys and I also put the blue tunnel in. I found if there's a tunnel on top of the fleece they don't tend to try to get underneath it. And I place their food bowl all the little balls that they like to play with. Make sure that was pretty sturdy. I don't put fleece in the baskets because they get very offended by it and just throw it out of them anyway. And then I was trying to decide how high to hang the different toys. That is a foraging toy. I think that's a second foraging toy. Yes. And now I'm putting the different chew toys. I like to hang these in the corners of litter boxes, corners of the cage itself, um, close to litter boxes, in the hopes that they chew those instead of the litter boxes. And so far that's worked really well. 
I also like to put some near the corners of the hammocks for the same reason. This one was being temperamental. That one I hung kind of in the middle of the edge of the hammock there. This one closer to the back of this hammock. I have lots of chew toys and it has served me well. Most of my bedding is now over a year old without being chewed on. And then I decided that that was maybe good enough, and I think at that point I decided to put stuff away. So this is a more minimalistic layout, but the rats really enjoy it. Normally I cram a lot more stuff in there. So there you go, two hammocks, a basket, two tunnels, toys, and litter boxes and food. My water bottles are on the outside. There it is.